there's an Amazon series potentially in the works, mm -hmm. similar to the quarterback series that the NFL did on Netflix, where they're potentially going to be following around NHL players through the season, seeing what they do off the ice, on the ice, how they prepare, just their lives in general. And I don't know about you, but I'm so excited for this. I love watching things like Behind the Bee that we referenced earlier. Again, shout out to another Homer thing. These like sort of behind the scenes looks into what it takes to be an NHL player, what it means to prepare not only mentally but physically, and then make sure you're performing at such a high level every single night. I just find that so fascinating. And they talked about the fact that they're going to follow 12 players. Seems yeah. a little much. I feel like maybe that's too many. I don't know. I'm a fan of kind of that. Um... You like that ending style? Like the jumping? I, I feel like that's too many. I think the quarterbacks one did five. Wait, what's the name of it though? Anthology. I like an anthology. I like spreading yeah. it around the league. I so like so yeah, if you want to spread it around, sure. But I think if you want to keep it to five to seven, that would be ideal. And then do multiple seasons. Like I don't want this to just be a one-time thing. I want you to find the best players this year and then next year get five more great players. Like So today we thought it would be fun just to both pick five players that we wanted to see in this Amazon series. So we both wrote down five players we didn't tell each other. So why don't you go ahead if and I'm get us started? If I'm not mistaken, two forwards, two defensemen, and a goalie. Those yeah. are our top five. And then if you have an honorable mention forward, go ahead, toss I it do in. have some honorable mentions. Good. Okay, some good. Guys so I, I did too. So why don't you go ahead and uh, give me, we'll do the honorable mentions at the end. Why don't you go ahead and give me your first one? You want to start with goalies? That sounds Let's fun. do goalies. Let's do goalies. First. Yeah. Go ahead. Really, there's no correct answer other than Ilya Briskalov. If he was still in the league. If he was still playing, of course. Anyone yeah. who remembers that man is an absolute gem. Uh, just the quotes that come out of that man. The best. The best. I'm going with the tandem. Oh, you're going with that? Oh, dude, I'm going the, with the homer tandem. it takes And today. I'm going to say the easy pick yeah. for this is to... to Swayman. To chronalize, if that's a word, I don't think it is. Luina Solmark and Jeremy Swayman as a goaltending tandem. The hug is legendary. It's the thing that I look forward to the most every single time the Bruins play. They have such a fun dynamic yep. that I want the entire league to be exposed to. They have just such a fun chemistry together, and uh, they would just they would be electric. Yeah, that's my that's my lock. So unfortunately, I knew you were going to be a homer. So I did pick Jeremy Swayman and Linus Allmark, but I had a backup just in case because I smelled it. I could smell it when he walked in. His list just four Boston Bruins on there. So I actually have Igor Shosturkin. Let me tell you why. Okay. Shosturkin represents Russia. So you get a different side to things you're not just talking about American and Canadian based players. He's in the Big Apple. I think he's the best goalie in the NHL. This season especially, the Rangers having so much, the frauds, all the stuff that goes on, his hot, hot streaks, his down streaks, just what it means to be considered a Vesna high caliber goalie and what's that like to play for such a high market team and to be such a competitive guy like Shostak and I think following him through the season with the Rangers would be really really entertaining yeah if you can't but obviously Linus Hallmark and Jeremy Swayman are the ones to go with there that's just the easy pick because it's like just Jeremy Swayman alone his off-ice personality is just electric those are our goalies for that so why don't I go ahead and take what do you want to do defenders next you want to do forwards let's, let's get into the forwards okay you know that? yeah let's do, let's do the meaty ones First guy of, I, I have three forwards, just mm -hmm. because I'm a squid like that. First guy, Trevor Secrets. Yeah. Face of the Anaheim Ducks, young talent, personalities off the charts. I think he would be so entertaining. What he was doing with the contracts this off season, the struggles he's going through this year. I think if they're, it's rumored that they're following around, around players already. So if you're filming this year and then next season to see if he's able to come back and become that franchise player again and sort of battle through what he's gone through all season long. I just think the NHL cover boy from last year, he's a big face in the league. He's must watch hockey for the Anaheim Ducks. He puts butts in seats. And that's something that I think is big. I think Trevor Zegers would be a lot of fun to watch on Amazon. I agree with you. It's kind of a risky pick a just bit. because we don't really know where his trajectory and his career is going to end up. I, we hope it's positive. We are rooting for Zegers. Um, That's what makes it exciting to me, though, because you're really betting on him having that comeback and the story. Would I would be love to root great. for Trevor. Yeah, I think I think Trevor would be yeah. a very good. Just the personality off ice alone, I think yeah. would be awesome. Just such a flashy, great player. So I, Trevor's my uh, first forward that I would. Especially if Sonny Milano was still on the team, yeah. and we could get 
some behind the scenes kind of talk about that that over the net goal that they had. Yeah, I just I want to know what it's just goal. like to be on a team like that to go through the contract negotiations like they did to be lowballed and then what is it like to be on a team that has so many young players but to not be getting over the hump and like to see what the frustration looks like if it's a fun yep. environment if it's tough i think it would just be very uh very but, interesting but also to be the quote unquote franchise player on a young team that yeah. has now missed the playoffs i think for six consecutive seasons yes yeah. just be interesting uh yeah for a guy who's underperformed thus far in his career or at least this season and uh what goes behind the scenes into uh just that whole program. I just be yeah, there's so the, many great guys the there. Generally, yeah. yeah, it would be fascinating. Uh, who's your first forward? Uh, it's a bundle. It's another bundle. That's another okay. tandem. Uh, I'm going with New Jersey Devils forward and defenseman, otherwise known as Jack and Luke Hughes, the brothers. Brother. I think that would be super fun. Especially, you will be getting some behind the scenes extra footage with Quinn. Quinn's gonna show up every now and then. He wants his camera um, time. Come on. I think it's a no-brainer if they want to go with this anthology series and they want to be covering several teams at one time. You got to go with brother pairings. So I, again, I think the New Jersey Devils are underperforming this team as a whole. A lot of people pick them first in the Metropolitan Division to come out ready to roar in the playoffs, and they're not even going to make the playoffs this year. So if we want to take a look at a team that's hungry to get back in the playoff hunt and kind of prove people wrong. It's the New Jersey Devils. They have to come out hot next season. And I think with their kind of young core, with Jack and Luke uh, manning the helm, I think that's a super exciting team to be paying attention to anyway. I would love to see the behind the scenes uh, going on in New Jersey. Yeah, I agree. Um, so my second forward on my list, I have William Nylander. Maybe that's okay. crazy. Maybe that's a hot take because I know some people will probably say Matthews. And Matthews is great. That's why I actually don't mind that though. Yeah, it's... you're gonna get Matthews, and you're gonna you're gonna get. He already Matthews. does it. I, I was gonna say Pasta too. Pasta is one of my honorable mentions, but it I see enough of Pasta that I'm like it would be fun and entertaining. But I know what I would be getting with Nylander. He's just so cool, man. He's so cool. I would love to just like meet him. He's the guy that I'd be so interested to just like sit down with and have a conversation. For for a Boston Bruins homer, you are quite a fan of the Toronto. Maple I, I, I love you love the Maple milk. Leafs player. Yeah, I love the milk. It's my, <laughs> but like Matthews is one of my favorite players to watch too. But I just think Nylander, he brings like this sort of like mystery to him. I, I don't know a certain like style of play to his game that I think would be very entertaining to sort of watch. He has that national fandom. We saw it when he was going to Sweden for a couple of the uh, European games this year. I just think it would be really entertaining. And I don't think you could go wrong with him or Matthews if you wanted to do both together, just sort of like a, a big three in Toronto with him, Marner, and Matthews. I don't really find Marner as interesting as the other two, but I think that would be pretty fun. And I think you'd get a really captivating audience with the Maple Leafs as well. And I just think Nylander for the national audience would be mm -hmm. really good too. That's he, a good point. Yeah, I think Nylander would be awesome. So. Like you have the one-two punch and then he's kind of the commentary that exactly. you're following. I think that's a really He's cool the way. mystery. You don't know what, I, you don't know I what like to expect. That. Yeah. I do like that. And who's your second guy? Uh, or third? <laughs> uh, Matthew and Brady Kachuk. I like that. Oh, we're going with a lot of duos here. They, yeah. they were one of my honorable But you mentions. gotta you gotta go with brother Tannen. You have to. You just simply have to. I think it's super interesting storyline-wise. You got two players who are in the upper echelon of like really talented NHL players on two teams that are kind of on opposite ends of the of the Eastern Conference right now with the Florida Panthers arguably the best team in, in hockey right now yeah and then the Ottawa Senators who missed the playoffs again and are kind of gonna have a lottery pick or something along those lines this year they're firecrackers too they just have yeah, they're just they so have funny. camera personalities. Yeah, they, they have that charisma. Yeah, not to mention you're also gonna get a couple phone calls or maybe a couple video chats with uh, with Papa Keith, yeah, with Daddy Keith Kachuk. So, there's a lot. There's a lot with them that we get learn. another NHL alum in the mix. That would be I don't know. You, you get. Uh, I think this is our first time on our list that we have a, a hockey uh, family. And not only do we have the brothers, but they have uh, their father, who is yeah. also an NHL veteran. So maybe there's some cool behind behind the scenes stuff, like of him helping them train and things. I think I yeah. think they were are an obvious choice. They were going to be one of mine, but once I saw you going with a couple of the tandems, I was like, I purposely did backups because I wanted to have different lists. But they were definitely a thing that I considered because I was like, it's a no brainer. Yeah, they're, well, they're yeah. So smart. you're saying I'm picking the vanilla picks? 
No, not vanilla, but I knew what your interest was here. <laughs> I knew you were going to go with a lot of tandem. So I was like, yeah. I was, I, I knew what you, you were going to say, a little. so I was going to come up with something actually creative. <laughs> yeah, I was going to be creative here, just so you guys didn't have the same thing. But, <laughs> um, now we'll just do, if you have some honorable forwards, yeah. throw it in there too. I was going to say maybe a young guy like Fantilli, mm -hmm. or Connor Bedard's an obvious one, but both of those guys are sort of like Talk about tough. creativity. Yeah, I would Iron love Iron. to see another national player, Elias Pedersen. I think it would be a lot of fun to see what it's mm -hmm. like through Pedersen's eyes. Another young guy, just got his money similar to Nylander, just casually not really brought up too much. I would also love to see like maybe a guy like we talked about earlier, like Larkin. What's it like to Sebastian Ajo? Larkin Some fun teams. Cool one. Ones that aren't on these like Larkin's obviously on a popular team, but like one like Ajo's on like a smaller market team, really try to get the players involved, or maybe like a Philip Forsberg. Seeing Forsberg him play, my mind. that would be awesome. Like those are kind of players that I'm like, I would love. Jason Robertson's another one that I would love to watch. Um, but those are kind of the forwards that I was thinking of. Like, of course, you want to see Connor McDavid, but Connor McDavid's personality is a little bit like it's vanilla. So it's kind of like. How much is he going to want to reveal? I would love to see Ovechkin or Crosby. Ovechkin with the goal chase would be a fun one to watch. Yep, Crosby with what's going on with Pittsburgh. What's his next chapter? Like, is Sid going to stay? Is he going to go? That would obviously be just prime entertainment. But Crosby's not known to do this kind of stuff. So I was trying to go with unique answers here, not just like the basic ones that you've probably seen on all of the other lists. Yeah, all the ones the that I'm listing. Let's you see. actually are surprisingly not. Most of them would be like, Austin Matthews, Connor Bichard, yeah. Connor McDavid, Sidney Crosby, Alex Ovechkin. Like, those are the top five. The only vanilla one you kind of have on there is Jack Hughes. A lot of people want to see Jack Hughes, but for obvious reasons. Pick. I'm going to double down on that. That's yeah, a that, that, that's, it's a great pick. I knew you were going to pick that just Thank because you it's for great. So I feel I like was, you've been on my neck all No, all you're good. <laughs> so I, I appreciate it. I originally was going to say Jack Hughes and Matthew Kachuk just because I really uh -huh. like the fire he brings, but yeah. I just think you're 100% right there, package deal. And that's a package great, they're great picks. Packaged. It has to be packaged because it's ju that's just a common sense thing. Yeah. Uh, who are your honorable mentions? David Pasternak, right off the bat. Of course. He is, uh, I mean, he's just a character. He's so funny. Yeah. Go go listen to interviews. I don't care if you hate the Boston Bruins. Just go listen to interviews with David Pasternak. Uh, he hates when he has to leave uh, the locker room when they're playing Barbie, <laughs> for instance. <laughs> <laughs> when you make him it's miss good. out on the Barbie song. Him and then uh, a, a guy who's like him that I forgot to mention, Panarin. Those two yeah. are just, their they're personalities off ice, they're just so funny. It's yeah. great. So David Postnog is a very easy pick in my, in yep. my opinion. Very entertaining. You're going to get him jarring with Brad Marchand, for example. So good, yeah. That's such a cool dynamic yeah. too. Uh, but I, I went in a different direction for this last one. Again, it's another duo and you can add a third one in there to, to make it a trio. But I'm kind of interested in in kind of uh, the the dying generation of of the goon. But I'm interested to see guys like Matt Martin and guys like Ryan Reeves, who are kind of in that kind of brawler kind of like category. And but see, I'd rather see like Matt Rempe. Then okay, Ryan then then put Rempe as the third. At, that yeah. would that would be interesting to see two guys that are in kind of a dying breed of what kind of like the last generation's hockey player. Yeah, Revo's was. cool. I would I would like to see Revo, but he's with the Maple Leafs. I'm like, there's a lot of other things going on yeah. with the Maple Leafs. And, and then add Rempe in, who's kind of coming Rempe into the league and kind of maybe also holding up the mantle of kind of like the the brawler, the fourth yeah. line brute that can also get some pucks in the, in the net. Yeah, I think those. So are I, I want to see the di the dying breed of hockey players mm -hmm. who aren't really respected or maybe aren't as there's just the people that you don't think of. I think yeah. that, that would be a cool way to look at a, a team altogether. Now, uh, let's get into the final two that we have here, our defensemen. Um, why don't you go ahead and kick us off? Uh, speaking of vanilla, Kel Makar. Yeah, that one's, that go that one's easy. That, it's an easy he's pick, yeah. He is arguably the best player in hockey right now. I'm going to say he's the best player in hockey right now. The I would say Nathan that McKinnon. I'm surprised neither of us said that. Line, we haven't seen that in, I mean, since Bobby Ray Orr. Bork, Paul Coffey, Bobby Orr, yeah. guys like that, Brian Leach. Like, that's the stuff that he's doing at the age that he's doing, the accolades that he's already accumulated uh, after not really being in the league for a whole lot in the grand scheme of things. 
he would be a super cool way to get inside on the ground floor with the Colorado Avalanche yeah. and just kind of watch their success as a team. I think that would be super cool. Again, I went for kind of some unique ones here. Mo Sider. Cider I'd love came, to see Cider. Came Cider across my man. Mind. Cider's one of the guys that I'm like, man, that kid's got a personality. He would man, be really he's got a head of hair. He's got a head of hair, he's got personality, and he's playing on an original 16 that it's up and coming in. Playing with guys like Patrick Kane, Dylan Larkin, Alex Dabrinka, you got some fun personality there. Stevie Y, if he pops in every now and then, that would be kind of a fun little interaction to see him. Uh, Mo Sider is one guy I thought of, and the other guy that I had on my list was Miro Heiskinen slash Roman Yossi. I like Roman Yossi and Maurice Sider as my first two defensemen to follow. Those are good picks. Yeah. And uh, in my second pick, is uh, I'm picking this Dallas defenseman for the same reason uh, I'm assuming that you picked William Nylander for the mm -hmm. Maple Leafs. I'm going with Thomas Harley. Oh, I would one. like to watch Harley. Yeah. Again, he's a rookie that's kind of coming out of nowhere. He's second in uh, point production for uh, defensemen, I think only behind Haskinen. Yeah. But he's really showing that, uh, that he's a legit talent. Dallas would be a super cool team to watch anyway, but I think to watch it specifically through a guy like Harley's eyes would be very interesting. I agree, yeah. Very exciting. I'm hoping this happens. There's some rumors that it would come sometime next year if the filming does happen, if the network does pick it up. So please, Amazon, do this for us. Uh, if it's like the hard knocks thing, that's fine. If they want to follow one team, I'm okay with it. I, we talked about Toronto being a pretty interesting one to follow along yeah. with, but um, I just think that the player following would be great. Uh, but let us know what you guys think about all this stuff in this episode. Comment some stuff you would like to see in future episodes. and. Drop your five players that you would love to see in this Amazon documentary. We're hoping it comes out sometime next year. We're very, very excited about it. So thank you guys for watching another episode of the podcast. We're going to be doing this every week. So we'll see you guys next week.